Hey everybody and thanks for tuning into the channel again today. We are going to go over the three top reasons why rental growth is starting to slow. Um, and then at the end of this episode, we're going to get into kind of a landlord silver lining on what to look forward to in the future as far as investment properties with rental tenants. Hey, thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Real Estate Minute Show. I am going to get into the three top reasons right away now. So rental growth during the pandemic was off the charts. I mean, we were seeing, and we've been seeing a pretty good ramp up before that happened, uh, before 2020, uh, where we were seeing units that, I mean, we were increasing rents 5, 10, 15% new, you know, depending on your rent control and what area you're in, you have limited, you know, rental increases for existing tenants. Uh, we would have a rental, for example, we put on the market for $3,000 and the year was 2018 and uh, we were getting 3,800 to 4,200. I mean, a massive difference, 30, 40% increases. Okay. During the pandemic, that was shot up even higher as people were looking to move around, get the hell out of wherever they were, get into something else. Uh, and those times are, I'm not saying done forever, but those times are probably not going to be around again in my lifetime. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. There's no crystal ball in this, but really the top three reasons for this. One in particular is that we've kind of maxed out on the underwriting of a tenant. So we used to use, everybody uses their own formula to qualify a tenant for a, an apartment or a home, whatever you're leasing. One is the three times rule, which means that the rent uh, can't be more than three times the monthly gross income. Or there's the 40% rule, which means that annual rent can't be more than 40% of their gross income of all sources. So those, those things were, were fine for the time being. Tenants have now been exceeding that year over year. They've been getting into, instead of 40%, they've been getting into 48%. Sometimes over half of their gross income is going to rent. Landlords are taking a little risk and saying, okay, I'll still approve them. They got decent credit because they want the money. They want the $4,200 for the $3,000 apartment, but that's coming to a head and it has come to a head. So we are seeing those underwriting guidelines are being, were being stressed. Now they're blown open uh, and landlords are actually getting a little nervous. So that's actually, they're leasing quicker to other, to people that are well qualified, have liquidity, meaning they have some cash in the bank and that they're taking a little bit less or the same rent. Uh, landlords are also taking rents for, uh, uh, for existing tenants, they're renewing existing tenants at uh, much less increases just to kind of keep them stable and keep the units occupied. Because you know, if you're an investor, every day that a $3,000 apartment goes uh, vacant is 100 bucks. So there's a balancing act you play with getting a place least. Number two is lack of wage growth. So over the course of many, many years, we'd see the average three to five percent wage increase. During the pandemic, that shot the hell up to eight, nine, sometimes 10, 12 percent wage increases. If you remember seeing the signs, $25 for a cashier. People were just trying to get bodies and that still exists a little bit today, but they were trying to get bodies to work. If you remember that, that's slowed down now. So we have, we're seeing back to the regular three to 5%. So ignoring the pandemic time, which you can see from this visual, since uh, this is published by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, since 2007, you'll see the average three to two to three and a half shot up during the pandemic up to 8%. And again, this is the national average. Some areas are way higher than this. And we're getting back to kind of a stable, you know, stability here of about five, which is still relatively high, but the wage growth is not high enough to account for 10, 15%, obviously, rent growth that was happening over the last few years. So that is now softening the rent as well. And the third reason is that demand is slowly decreasing for rentals because they got so expensive. So people are saying, forget it, I'll just stay where I'm at. Um, I'll stay where I'm at and I'll try to negotiate a decent increase or try to negotiate something I can afford. Uh, landlords, again, like I said earlier, and reason number one is landlords are more inclined to keep you with a small increase or no increase at all because they don't want a vacant unit right now. And so that's decreasing demand as people start staying put. So for those three reasons, that's why rental growth is stabilizing or slowly softening in most markets around this country. But as I promised, there is a silver lining for landlords and there is a silver lining for tenants. There's always a point where humans want to balance any market. If you leave humans alone, the market will balance itself, okay, with some regulations. But what's going to happen in the future, in my eyes, as these interest rates come down and down a little bit more, we're not going to get to the two and a half, three percent again, but it will come down from seven, hopefully, especially for some commercial mortgages or for landlords that own rental properties. And that will allow the landlords a little bit more 
relief valve of the pressure they might be feeling on an adjustable rate loan where they don't need to hammer the huge rent and it might help stabilize that property more. It's also better to have a more stable rental environment because when your unit goes vacant, you want other customers to come into your units. If you are only looking to get 4000 for a $3,500 apartment, you're going to be waiting a while for that one kind of pig in the poke. It's better to have an even keeled market. And for tenants, that is a huge bonus for you as landlords continue to work with you. And I think that they will over time. So that'll create a much more stable market. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. Uh, I'd love for you to like and subscribe to the channel. Um, helps out a lot of people. And uh, it's because of you that it does so. We'll see you next week.